The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to St. David's morning worship on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Please join with us in the prayers that we may worship together to this day. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect Prayer for this Sunday. God of the Prophets, in every age you send the word of truth, familiar yet new. Let us not be counted among those who lack faith, but give us vision to see Christ in our midst and to welcome your saving word. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our readings this morning are from 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 to 5 and 9 to 10. Psalm 48. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 to 10. And Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hand? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent and they cast out many demons, and anointed with oil many who were sick, and cured them. This is the Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As many, or if not all of you, know, over a week ago, we elected a new bishop, the Reverend Stephen London, who is currently rector of St. Thomas's in Sherwood Park. And on our clergy Facebook group, along with many messages of blessings, one person posted, you don't know what you're getting in for. 
Well, I'm sure those first friends of Jesus didn't know what they were getting in for either. For one thing, they had no idea, even though he told them, that he would be crucified. Neither did he expect he'd send them out on a mission trip with so little preparation. It's true they'd heard him talk about the kingdom of God drawing near and inviting people to change their expectations of what God is up to and what it means to follow God. This Jesus summed up with the words repent and believe. They'd seen, too, that Jesus healed people of diseases of the body, the mind, and the spirit. And the crowds definitely saw power and an authority in Jesus that they didn't see in the religious leaders of their day. And so they followed him. But back in his hometown, people's reaction was different. While on the one hand, people recognized that Jesus had a certain wisdom and a power to heal, on the other hand, they scoffed. They just couldn't accept that the man they knew as Mary's son could possibly be worth eating. Familiarity sometimes breeds contempt. The hometown's crowd unbelief had a restrictive, dampening sort of effect on Jesus' power. Jesus could do no deeds of power there, and he was able to heal or cure just a few of the sick. So somehow our belief, our trust in God's power, that God's power is at work through Jesus, is necessary for him to heal. Last week, in the story of the hemorrhaging woman, we saw that she believed that even touching Jesus' garment would be enough for a cure. Conversely, those expecting nothing from God will not be disappointed. Mark doesn't say what Jesus' friends thought of the poor reception he received in his hometown. But it wasn't long after that that Jesus sent them out two by two, giving them authority to preach, the power to cure disease, including casting out unclean spirits. Now, today we might consider those unclean spirits as any non-physical causes of illness, things like stress or negative attitudes or past hurtful experiences. Now, Jesus sent the disciples out without letting them make the usual preparations for a journey. Uh, they were to go with no packed bags, no pre-bookings at the inns. For Jesus knew his time was short, and it was urgent that everyone hear the good news that God's restoration of the world had begun. They were to go where they were received, accept hospitality from whomever offered it, and leave the village if people weren't receptive to their message. So they went out, trusting in the power of God, that it could work through them, because Jesus himself had sent them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should change their hearts and lives, they cast out many demons, and they anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Two things I invite us to note from this passage. The first is that Jesus sent them out. He didn't say, just stay right here where we are and hope that people will come where you are. No, Jesus sent them out. And so too, Jesus sends us out, out from this place, into the wider community, to bear good news of hope, healing, and new life. Secondly, those first followers of Jesus did not know everything there was to know about Jesus. They didn't even know he would die and be raised from the dead. All they had was the basic message. God is present among us, restoring the world. 
There is hope, especially for those who have been hopeless. Nowadays, we Christians tend to think that we need to be able to explain everything that's in the creeds or know the Bible inside and out before we can possibly go out into the world. But Jesus sends us out just as we are. The only suitcase we can take is the stories we have of what a difference knowing God has made and continues to make in our lives. And sometimes Christians mistakenly feel inadequate also if they haven't had some super spiritual religious conversion experience such as Paul on the road to Damascus or whatever it was those folks in the church in Corinth were boasting about. And when St. Paul writes to them, he says to that church group, that he's had some amazing spiritual experiences. But ultimately he learned that the only thing he could boast about was Jesus, Jesus' death and resurrection. You see, Paul had something that he called a thorn in the flesh. And I don't know, scholars aren't sure what that is, possibly some recurrent disease. And Paul prayed earnestly with, that God would take it away. But God said, no. That disease or disfigurement kept Paul humble. God told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul discovered that there's a kind of strength a strength that's really worth having and that to possess it you have to be weak great spiritual highs are not what we need to be god's emissaries but rather simply an awareness of our human frailty of what we lack paul says whenever i am weak then i am strong for when we know we are inadequate to the task, then we're open to the power of God working in and through us. Bishop Alex Stephen probably at some level, it's true, doesn't know what he's in for in his new role as the 11th Bishop of the Diocese of Edmonton. And I'm sure there'll be moments in the next little while, and even after his consecration, when Stephen feels inadequate to the task. But God's word for Stephen is, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. And it's also God's word for us, little St. David's parish, as we accept God's commission to go out into the community with a message of God's kingdom growing among us, bringing healing, hope, and new life. And when we feel inadequate to the task, let us remember God's word. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose Spirit helps us in our weakness and guides us in our prayers, we pray for the Church and for the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Renew the life and faith of the Church strengthen our witness and make us one in christ we pray this day for bishop elect stephen for dean alex for our partner parish of lubanga and Bouye diocese and for our sisters and brothers in the kihiwin cree nation grant that we and all who confess that christ is lord may be faithful in your service and filled with the Spirit, that the world may be turned to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Guide the nations in the ways of justice, liberty, and peace. And help them to seek the unity and welfare of all people. We're praying especially this week for the social support ministries in our diocesan family, the inner city pastoral mission, Canterbury Court, the regional interfaith housing initiative, E4C, Great Edmonton Alliance, and Our House Addiction and Recovery Center, and those who work in these ministries. Give to all in authority wisdom to know and strength to do what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those in sorrow. Heal the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and deliver the oppressed. We remember, especially at this time, all those First Nations families who lost relatives at the residential schools. Grant us compassion for all who suffer and help us so to carry one another's burdens that we may fulfill the law of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks and praise for all who have served you faithfully here on earth, and especially those who have revealed to us your grace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. May we and all your people share the life and joy of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.